Welcome to Training in Instructional Design. This will be an introduction to training in adult learning. This is Lecture A. The learning objectives for the Introduction to Training in Adult Learning Unit are Number 1. Describe what is training. Number 2. Describe what trainers do. Number 3. Define the levels of learning per Bloom's taxonomic domains cognitive, affective, psychomotor. Number 4. Describe the characteristics of adult learners and factors that impact training design and learning outcomes. Number five, describe the three basic steps of the training cycle. And six, describe the five phases of the ADDIE model of instructional design. Training is a very important part to the implementation of electronic health records. Here's a quote from the California Healthcare Foundation on their training strategies and electronic health record deployment techniques. The extensive training that is required to teach staff and providers to use an electronic health record system is one of the larger costs of implementation and an important opportunity for realizing the transformation in care delivery. Notice the costs are very large for training, but training is also an opportunity with the implementation of an electronic health record system where you can actually improve the quality of care. Training should be a part of the communications plan, and ongoing training should be a part of an organization's EHR maintenance plan. Adequate training, from basic to advanced, is essential for EHR implementation success. Training should start from the time the plan is conceived, and it should be ongoing because changes will be made to the software, employees will change jobs, and new employees will join the organization. Organizations can incorporate a variety of strategies for training. Communication methods can include letters, posters, videos, internet sites or pages, brown bag sessions, demonstrations in physician and clinical lounges, flyers, and email. Other methods to consider are group sessions in a technology lab, and even one-on-one -on -one with particularly recalcitrant users. Training is defined as learning that is provided in order to improve performance on the present job. Training includes planned activities on the part of the organization to increase job-related knowledge and skills or to modify the attitudes and behaviors of the members in the way that it is consistent with the goals of the organization or the individual's job. Trainers must determine which behaviors need to be changed, what knowledge and skills the learner must develop so they can change their behaviors, and trainers must identify barriers that need to be addressed so the learner can implement those behaviors and skills and knowledge on the job. It is important to remember that it may take 40 hours of preparation for each hour of training that is delivered. Training should be competency-based, sequential, tracked, and evaluated. Competency-based training means it's job-related. The learners are required to master the knowledge, skill, or an attitude and the training focuses on the job by having the learners achieve the criteria or standards necessary for proper task performance. Training should also be sequential. The lessons are logical, and they are organized sequentially beginning with foundation knowledge and moving to more advanced topics. Training also should be tracked. A tracking system is established to allow changes and updates to the learning material. It's also important to track the learner's progress through the training that the organization has established. And finally, training must be evaluated. Evaluation and corrective actions allow for a continuous improvement and maintenance of the training material, and also evaluates how the learners have acquired knowledge, skills, and attitudes. What do trainers do? Well, the job is actually very varied. You may think traditionally there is more group training where someone stands in front of a class and gives a large lecture or a presentation or leads a group in some hands-on training. In group training, you need to develop a diagnosis and the needs analysis for the training, develop a training approach, a program design. You have to develop the materials used in the training and, of course, conduct the training and then evaluate the training. And this ends up being a loop where you go from evaluation back to the needs analysis and the diagnosis to make sure your training was correct. In addition to group training, there's also individual training. In individual training, you have performance coaching, one-on-one -on -one job training, and in some cases, trainers will be involved in career counseling. 
Moving from an individual to the whole organization, sometimes a trainer is involved in organization development, helping with team building, intergroup meetings, and brainstorming new decisions and projects. Who does the training for an electronic health record implementation? You may assume that the vendors have all the training materials, and they can come in and just provide the training. Sometimes this works, but it's also important to have in-house trainers, and there are different types of in-house trainers. There are super users. These are clinicians or staff who are given extra training so they can help other people on the clinical floor use the system. Clinicians can train other clinicians. In this way, they are very familiar with the clinical procedures and the workflow of the clinic and can help each other. And also, as we discussed, one-on-one -on -one and small group trainings, which can be provided by a professional trainer. Let's look at some of the roles and the competencies of a good trainer. Some of the major roles of a trainer are analysis and assessment, development of the training materials, acting as an instructor or facilitator, and also administering the training. We'll look at each of these roles and at their associated competencies in greater depth in the next few slides. In the role of analysis and assessment, the trainer has to understand the industry, be proficient with information technology, data analysis skills, and research skills. In the development role, the trainer's competencies understand adult learning, provide feedback to the learners, excellent oral and written communication skills, proficiency with electronic systems for communication, and preparing good learning objectives for the training. In the role of an instructor or facilitator, the primary competencies a good trainer needs is adult learning principles, skills related to coaching and giving feedback, and also understanding group dynamics and processes in a training environment. As an administrator, the trainer is required to have computer competence in being able to select and identify training facilities, including audiovisual equipment, and be able to do a cost-benefit analysis, which looks at the cost involved in creating the training and the benefits the organization will experience once the training is complete. Trainers have to have good project management skills and also good records management skills to keep track of the various training courses and the learner's successful completion of that training. There are some different professional organizations for trainers and these are listed on the screen. You see the Association for Talent Development, formerly known as the American Society for Training and Development, and there's a website, www.td.org. There's also a new organization called ITRAIN. It's the International Association of Information Technology Trainers. So as we prepare to go to the next unit of this section, Think about the cone of learning. Learners will retain 10% of what they read, 20% of what they hear, 30% of what they see, 50% of what they see and hear together, 70% of what they say or repeat, and 90% of what they say while doing what they are talking about. Hear, see, say, do, and teach others. Think about this as we look at the principles of adult learning and how we can create effective training. This concludes the lecture on the introduction to training in adult learning. The summary of this lecture is that number one, training is an important component to the successful implementation of an EHR or changing clinical practice to meet meaningful use criteria. Number two, depending on the organizational structure of the institution, a trainer can perform one or several roles including defining training needs, developing training materials, delivering the training, and administration of training programs, and number three, the most effective training materials use visuals along with text and sometimes sound.